What if a script you create could suggest the commands you were typing by pressing tab? This video will demonstrate how to add autocomplete to a bash script, giving you bragging rights for how cool your terminal tools are. To get started, the first thing I'm going to do is create a directory on my computer where all this code will live. So make directory documents learning and I'll call it bash autocomplete like so. And then I'll open it with VS code, but you can use whatever text editor you want, obviously. On the left side, I'm going to go ahead and create our first file. And the first thing I want to do is talk about hash maps and bash. So I'll call this hash map like so. You might be wondering why am I not doing a file extension? Because I can just put the shebang at the top. And what this is, is just a hashtag exclamation mark. And then the path to the binary that runs bash. So in my case, it's bin bash like so. If you're on Mac, you can do bin zsh, zsh or whatever. And you can also do hashtag bin sh. But I'm on Linux, so I'm just gonna do bin bash. The first thing that I wanna explain before we move any further is how hash maps work in bash. So I'm just gonna declare a hash map of animals mapping the sound an animal makes to that animal. So in our case, I'll just do declare dash a animals. So animals is the name of the hash map and the convention in bash is to always have every variable name uppercase. Inside of animals, the first one I'll do is moo. The animal that makes that sound is cow. And then I'll do woof, which is the sound that a dog makes. Now down here, the way that we can tell if a key exists in a hash map is like this. So we do if two brackets, square brackets like that, dash n, which checks if the string is non-zero. And then in here in quotes, we'll do dollar sign brackets, animals, and then square brackets in here. And in these square brackets is going to be the string key. Real quick, let me finish the if statement like so. So you do if the conditional semicolon, then, and then to close the if statement, you do fi, which is just if backwards. And then up here for our string key, I'll just declare a variable sound like so sound will be moo and then to pass in sound here i just do dollar sign sound like so and then if the statement is true line 10 will run so i'll just do echo sound exists in animals let me go ahead and run this i'll do ch mod plus x which gives this execution access on hash map go ahead and run this and you'll see that it printed out that Moo existed in animals. Let me change this to something else. And if I run it again, you'll see nothing will happen. And if you want to echo that it doesn't exist, just put an else here. And then in here, just say echo. I'm going to paste it from line 10. Does not exist. So go ahead and do it again. You can see that the else ran and it says that it does not exist. So that's a very quick intro to hash maps in bash. Now let's go ahead and create a file which will handle our completion logic. To do this on the left side, I'm going to create a new file called dev tool completion. And the same thing, I'm going to do the shebang at the top like so. And the command line tool that we're going to create or the example command line tool will just be called dev tool. So to define it, I'm going to use a function right here, function dev tool, like so. And on the inside, I'm going to just echo dev tool time, like so. This video is just showing you how to do autocomplete and it's not going to show how to write an actual dev tool just to keep things simple. And then down here, we're going to define our function that will handle our logic for auto completion. So we'll do function underscore dev tool, like so. This function has the same name as dev tool, but just an underscore in front of it. And that's the convention for bash autocomplete. So what we'll do in here first is just echo dev tool called to prove that when I try to hit tab when I'm running my command, it'll automatically call the dev tool autocomplete function here. And in order to tie the two functions together, at the very bottom we do complete dash f dev tool dev tool. 
So this basically tells our terminal, whenever you hit tab and you're interacting with the dev tool command, call on this function here. So I'm gonna go ahead and test this out in the terminal. To have all this available in the terminal, I'm gonna type source and then dev tool completion. And then if I type dev tool, you can see that the command works as expected. Now, if I do dev tool and I hit tab a bunch of times, see how every time I press tab, it does the dev tool called. So things are working as expected. Now let's build out our autocomplete logic. It's important to note that while we're in the state of being suggested commands for auto completion, for example, when I do dev tool and hit tab a bunch of times, you'll see that I'm not back with the terminal prompt to get out of here. You can just hit control C and then you're back home. Now let's talk about some of the keywords that we'll make use of that are part of bash so we can make auto completion work. We're gonna clear our dev tool suggestion function. And the first one we'll talk about is comp words like so. And this is an array which is indexed at zero containing all of the words separated by space on the current line. The next one is comp C word. And this is the current index where the user's cursor is located at. So we can make use of this to figure out what we need to suggest with our autocomplete. And the next one is comp line, which is the entire line itself as a string. Finally, the last one we need to know about is comp reply. And that's the variable that we're going to populate with autocomplete suggestions to the user. To help understand, I'm going to echo each one, except comp reply, since this one we're only writing to. I'm gonna go ahead and echo each one with associated helpful messages. So this one's the line as an array. This one's the cursor index. And then the last one is just the line as a string. So echo line as a string. Cool, so for these changes to take effect, I'm going to source, I'm going to source the file again. So source dev tool completion. And then now if I do dev tool and hit tab a bunch of times, you'll see that it gets printed out. But it looks a little confusing because a line got printed on this initial line here. So if I just do an echo up here and then source the file again. Let's try it again. So dev tool, I'll hit tab a bunch of times. My cursor index is at one because it was located at this space after dev tool. So it's on another word. So now let me, so even though there's no word there because the cursor is a space away, it counts it as the next word. So dev tool, clear this. Let me do dev tool and then another argument here. I'll hit tab a bunch of times. You'll see that my cursor is still at one because it was located right after this with no space in between. But if I do it again, let's clear this. If I do it again with a space after, you'll see it'll update to two because it's space separated. So this is one and then two, but it's indexed at zero. So this is zero, one, and then my cursor was over here separated from ASDF. So that's why it's a two. Another thing you'll notice is you see how the array is only printing the first element while the whole line as a string is printing what's really there. It's because when you try to print an array variable in bash, it only prints the first word. So to properly display comp words, we need a for loop. So let's do for word in quotes, comp words, parentheses at sign like that. Forgot to wrap it in curly braces like that. We're gonna do do done down here. And then inside we're gonna do echo dash n. The dash n means don't specify a new line so that it's formatted a little nicer. Do echo dash n. I'm just gonna print out the word and then a comma. And then down here, I'll just do an empty echo so that it prints a new line. So now let's try it out now. For the changes to take effect, source as always. And then let me do dev tool, ASDF, and then something else. Nice, so you can see that there were three elements here. Let me switch this around, put the space at the end so it's a little easier to understand. Source, let's try again. Dev tool, ASDF, like that, tab. Nice, things are working as expected. And you'll see the cursor index I'm at is two because there was no space after this third element. For our auto completion logic, I was thinking we could follow the completion that works with git 
Specifically, when you type git in the terminal, hit tab a bunch of times, it suggests everything for you. And then if I do git c, hit tab, it'll suggest everything that starts with c. If I do git a, it suggests everything with a. For our case, and we're just trying to learn, let's do commit and add, as those are super common commands used when you're running git. So up here, I'm going to define an array which will contain both of those. And to do an array in bash, it's really, the syntax looks more like you're defining a string, except there are space separated values in the string, which makes it an array. So up here, local, I'm going to call it available commands. And this will be add and commit like so. The next thing I'm going to do is have an if statement, which just checks if the only thing I typed was dev tool. Because if you only type dev tool and hit tab, it should suggest add or commit up here. So that if statement is going to be if we're going to compare comp C word with one. Comp C word dash EQ one semicolon then. And then down here FI, which closes the if statement. We also need the comp reply variable. So up here, going to set comp reply to be initially empty. You have to use this parentheses syntax for it. It's so that things get formatted correctly. So now in here, I'm going to set a variable for the current word and current word will be equal to comp words. And I'm going to pass in the index comp C word like so. I'm going to move these comments that I made up here and then get rid of the stuff down there since we're done printing them out. We don't need comp line. This was just for reference. So I'm going to get rid of that. And then this comment, I'm going to move up to comp reply. And then I'll get rid of comp reply down here. I'll also move the comment up here. And then let's get rid of everything down here to clean up. So now it's time to populate the comp reply variable. That's going to be comp reply equals parentheses dollar sign and then another parentheses and this nested parentheses just evaluates whatever command goes inside of here and then comp reply will assign itself to it this outer parentheses is called a subshell and i'll link to some resources in the description if you want to read up on it further but in the interest of time we're just going to make use of it and if you want to learn more by all means and inside we're going to do comp gen dash w which means find the words that match or the words that we should suggest out of available commands compared with the current word that we're at so pass it in right here and then we should be good to test it out so let me clear this i realized i made a mistake on line 18 get rid of the dollar sign here so let's try it again, removing the dollar sign for when we define current word. So source, oops, source dev tool completion. And now if I do dev tool and hit tab a bunch of times, you'll see that everything works as expected. Nice. So be sure to remove this dollar sign. I didn't mean to put that there. That was just a mistake. All right. So we have basic autocomplete functionality, which is great. If I do a, it'll auto suggest add. And then if I hit tab, it won't suggest anything else. Same thing for if I do dev tool C and hit tab, it'll suggest commit and I'll hit tab a bunch of times and it won't suggest anything else. Notice though, since we're trying to replicate some of Git's functionality, when I do Git add and then hit tab a bunch of times, the default behavior, it just suggests all the directories and files of your current location. So how can we do this? Let's add in an else right here. And then let me indent this because it was bothering me. Comp reply can just be the output. Instead of this whole comp gen thing, we can just do ls like so. And then if I source the file, let's try it again. Dev tool, hit tab a bunch of times. It'll suggest add and commit. If I hit commit and then tab, you'll see that we get the same functionality as git where it suggests everything that's in the current directory that you're in, which is great. Taking this a step further, let's check out all the available arguments you can send to git commit. So if I do git help commit, it'll bring up the help page for git commit and you'll see that there are some things in here, all these different arguments you can send in with the dashes, for example, mend, 
and no verify. So why don't we implement autocomplete for those commands as well? To do so, we're going to make use of hash maps, which we talked about earlier. So up here in the dev tool completion function, I'm going to define a hash map. So we'll do declare dash a, I'll call it command mapping equal to open parentheses. And then in here, we're going to map strings to string arrays. The keys in here are going to be commands that we've already typed. And then the array are going to be further suggestions that we can show to the user. So in our case, if the user types commit, we want to suggest them two extra arguments, which will be either dash dash amend or dash dash no dash edit, like so. And then let's restructure our logic here so that it works as intended. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move current word out of the if statement. And then under current word, I'm going to define a variable called word after dev tool. So local word after dev tool. And this will just be comp words with the index of one. And to help explain this, I'm going to leave a comment here, which just says, if the user entered dev tool add, word after dev tool would be add. And the reason why we're storing this to a variable is because we can later use this inside of the dictionary here to suggest more things. And then inside of our if statement, I'm going to add an elif. And then we're going to use the same logic from earlier to see if the key exists in the dictionary or the hash map. We'll do dash n, which means if it's a non-empty string inside of quotes, dollar sign, curly braces, command mapping, and then in here, we're going to pass in dollar sign word after dev tool, like so. Semicolon then, we'll set the comp reply to be something else. And in this case, it'll be comp gen dash w, same thing, except now it's going to be command mapping and then the word after dev tool with whatever the current word is. So basically, this if statement here is basically checking if we've passed commit because commit is the only key that's in this dictionary. If it is, then comp reply will be set to whatever is in this array that commit maps to compared with the current word. So I'll show you what I mean. Let's go ahead and test this out. So let's source the file. And then if I do dev tool, tab, 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 same behavior here, nothing changed. Now if I do commit, and then hit tab a bunch of times, you'll see that it suggests the first two dashes since both options up here start with dashes. And then further pressing tab, we get suggested these two. So now if I do A and hit tab, it does amend. And then if I did tab again and do N, you'll see no edit pops up. So now we've nested suggestions in commands that we've entered. Simple auto completion in bash. You love to see it.